Hey guys, how are you doing? As you can see, got some Super ATV goodies in the background there. We are going to get the Battle Wagon into winter mode. As you guys know, we ride all year long. It doesn't matter if it's raining or snowing or if it's cold or hot, we're out there. These are all terrain vehicles. We use them rain or shine. So with that being said, we're gonna put some goodies on the Razor to make it more comfortable this winter. I know a lot of you guys have seen me over the years say, you know what, I don't like full windshields. I don't like cabin enclosures. Guess I'm getting old. So we're gonna slap a full windshield on it, a glass windshield. We're gonna slap a rear windshield on it. We're gonna do upper doors. And we're also gonna put in some new storage bags inside the cabin. So if you've watched the videos for a long time, you know I've never really been big on windshields. I've never really worn a, a full windshield on the Razor. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. A, I hate the fact that windshields get dirty, and in the winter time when you get mud on them, they freeze. B, I don't like the fact that it stops all the airflow in the summertime and in the spring months when it's warmer, you get super hot. That goes for the front and the rear windshield. I know a lot of you guys run them all year round, I just can't deal with that. As for running a full plastic windshield or a Lexan or a polycarbonate or whatever you want to run. I've tried a lot of them. I've watched my buddies try a lot of them. At the end of the day, they all get scratched. And even if you put a wiper on them, that just makes it worse. They're hard to clean. You got to constantly get out and clean them. I rather wipe my goggles. If you can snowmobile or ATV in the winter, then you can side by side in the winter. So I've always said, you know what, just dress for the weather and deal with it. I like being in the outdoors, so I've never really had a problem whether it was hot or cold. But we're gonna change it up because there really is some times where it's nice to have a windshield. So let's stop talking, let's dig into these parts, and as we install them, we'll chat a little bit more. We won't be installing all the parts you see here in today's video. There'll be a separate video for the cabin enclosure as well as the door bags. What you see here is the full glass windshield. You see the polycarbonate rear windshield. You've got two door bags. The polycarbonate windshields come with a protective film you have to remove to prevent them from getting scratched during manufacturing and shipping. These are the canvas upper doors with huge vinyl windows. You can fold these up, they roll up and Velcro away if you don't wanna use them while they're on the machine. And they just have a button kind of attachment that you mount into the doors. Obviously we got the stickers, you need the stickers. We got the um, roof bag, this one mounts up top on the roof, it's a great storage bag, keeps things out of the elements. All right, so we got everything unpacked pretty much. We got our glass windshield here. This windshield comes with a wiper. It's a DOT approved windshield, it's laminated. It's gonna work awesome. In the past I said if I ever do run a full windshield, I will only run a glass windshield. It's easier to clean, it doesn't scratch, you can use a wiper, it's just so much better. It's not as strong as polycarbonate in a rollover situation or if it gets hit by a rock, it could crack or shatter. But everything else that to me outweighs the benefits of polycarbonate for my type of use. I feel if I'm gonna go down the road with a windshield, this is the way to do it. And this is the one that gives you the most longevity. Uh, so I'm really happy with that. The back windshield is polycarbonate. And this is a made in the USA product actually too, which is really cool. Um, and this will cover the back. And here you see the slits. Those are your harness holes. And there's rubber inserts there uh, that we'll put in there later. Here we've got our Super ATV door bags. These guys are nice. Uh, the door bags I got on right now are pretty worn out and the zippers are broken on them. Uh, they're not Super ATV, so I figured why not spice everything up and uh, do a full retrofit with the Super ATV stuff. Since we're building the cabin, why not outfit it with some goodies on the inside? Here we have the under roof storage rack from Super ATV. This is awesome, it's gonna be out of the elements, it's gonna let me stick some gloves and, and a camera, some batteries, stuff like that in there. So that's awesome. I've been wanting this one for a while actually. Everyone that rides a side-by-side -side knows one of the biggest problems is storage space, especially if you carry a lot of gear or go on longer trips. Having the ability to carry stuff with you is awesome. There's just not enough storage space on these units. And here we have one of the side windows. They're huge. Can you see me? So yeah, they're pretty huge and they're very nice. Um, they actually advertise that they're super clear uh, and they are UV protected. 
And the cool thing about these two is these whole, this whole setup is also manufactured in the USA. And uh, this is a high quality product. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. I know some of my buddies have run these in the past, so I can't wait to see how things work. Uh, the install should be pretty straightforward. I talked to the guys at Super ATV. They said this is some super easy stuff to install. As everything from Super ATV, if it doesn't come with a printed set of instructions, the instructions are available in PDF format online on their website. And everything is included, insulation, hardware, everything you'll need to make it an easy job. These are very simple installs, so we're just really gonna go through the basics. Um, and we're not really gonna spend too much time showing you how to do it, because I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone can install a windshield. I mean, it's, it's, it's about as basic as things get. So we'll start off by taking off my quarter windshield, which has been my favorite windshield to run and probably what I'll go back to in the spring, summer, fall, because it just gives me the most versatility. It stops the over hood water flow. It deflects a lot of air over top of you, but it doesn't give you the issues of having to clean your windshield when you're going through puddles or someone's roosting you and stuff like that. And it gives you the airflow that you want. It's a happy medium. And to me, it's the ultimate all around windshield design. But when it's cold here in Canada and we're planning some winter riding, we're planning to do a lot of winter riding and go down to Quebec and stuff like that. It's gonna be nice to have this and cut down some of that wind and not always have to wear goggles and not always have to wear a full face. So this is gonna be like, we're basically uh, increasing the creature comforts of the Razor. Uh, we're making things a little bit more comfortable. I'm not going to the level of getting a heater, but hey, who knows what'll happen down the line. So yeah, let's pull the old windshield off and we'll slap on the full windshield first. All right, so we're gonna start by taking off whatever old windshield you've got, if you've got one on. Okay, so here we have all the hardware. Looks like uh, the main locking mechanism is just four clamps to the cage. We've got all the seals, as well as two packages of stick-on seal by the looks of it, like a closed cell foam. We got the wiper. This is a manual wiper setup, but I'm gonna try my best to see if I can maybe find a wiper motor that works and retrofit a power wiper into this. I'm also gonna try and retrofit a uh, squirt nozzle into this so I can have some, um, some liquid to clean, clean the windshield with. All right, so devise some sort of a workbench. I just made one out here. Use the workbench inside or whatever you got. And we're gonna slap this windshield together really quick. This install is super easy, like I said. We're just gonna put a few pieces on here. We're gonna glue the seals on and we're gonna get the wiper installed. So I noticed there's like an oily film on here and that's definitely not gonna help the seal stick. So spray this guy down with some cleaner. I'm just using some invisible glass and then just wipe this surface because there's gonna be an adhesive seal that goes on there and you want it to stick well. Grab your two seals, adhesive on one end, and we're gonna apply them here. Seal's a little longer than it needs to be, so we'll just trim it when we're done. Okay. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of overhang. And then I got some excess left on this side. Oh wow, this stuff sticks real nice. Real good adhesive on there. And it's a really nice, soft, closed cell foam, like a memory type foam. It's nice. We'll do the same on the other side. So I'm gonna trim the excess seal here and the same on the bottom. Now, if you want a more in-depth installation, step-by-step, step, then Super ATV's got a great video on their YouTube channel going ev over every single step of this installation. We're just flying through it. Next, we're gonna install our sliding vent. That just goes on these two threaded tabs here. And then you just get these thumb screws, nice and easy. So you can tighten it up or loosen it, get some airflow in the cabin. Wish all installs were like this. <laughs> Next step is our seals. There's two types of seals. One goes straight down like this. One is on 90 degrees. Um, we're gonna take the straight seal and we're gonna mount it on the bottom of the windshield. We're gonna take the 90 degree seal, we're gonna mount it on the top of the windshield. And when we do mount it on the top of the windshield, we're taking the ceiling edge towards the inside of the cabin because it's gonna seal up, up on top of the windshield around the roll bar area there. This one is gonna seal with your hood and your body line on the front of the razor. That's why it's going down. They've also sent you a little extra than you need here. So we're gonna start on one end and just kind of work our way through. You just press it on, it's not rocket science. Make sure you get it on there and seat it really nice. You gotta push it in there real good. 
So do a little bit, especially to get it started, and then push it up on there so it seats itself real nice and flush. So it seals nicely, and you also don't have any leaks or you don't have the seal popping off. It conforms really nicely to all the curves and the bends. It's actually going on really good. Just repeat this throughout the whole process. I notice also if you leave the vent open, it's a good spot to get your fingers and apply pressure. So I'm just going bit by bit, I'm getting it started and then I'm using my thumbs to press it into place. And now you can go ahead and you can trim this seal right at the edge there. I'm just gonna use some side cutters to do that. We're gonna get the 90 degree seal now and we're gonna face the ceiling portion towards the inside of the cab, so the inside of the window. So we're gonna start down here and we're gonna work our way around. Same procedure as with the other seal. Once we get to the end here, we're gonna trim off the access. There we are. The last step is going to be mounting our wiper and then we'll get the windshield mounted on the razor. Take your cap off, flip this guy over, take apart your manual wiper mechanism, set the hardware aside, nut, washer stack, two rubber seals. We're gonna take a washer, we're gonna take a rubber seal, we're gonna put it through. We're gonna take a, wa um, a rubber seal, our washers, our nut, and we're just gonna snug it up. Then there's a, a keyed section inside the wiper arm and on the stud here. And we're gonna put that in there. We're gonna leave it loose for now. I'm just gonna get my nut started. I'm going to put the, um, the wiper arm on and then we're going to position it so that we get full swing. Set it up so that it's in a comfortable position for you. You can always change it later. I'm going to adjust mine a bit. To snug this up you need two 17 mils. There we go. You can see that rubber seal squished down and then a 10 mil to tighten the wiper arm. Put your cap back on and you're done. Let's test it. I'm gonna pull my protecting sleeve off there. Looks like it works. I'm gonna try and figure out a way to make this motorized so I don't have to use my hand. So now that all of this is put together, we can get it on the razor and the last step is putting the four mounting clamps on there. And this is also gonna be the time where we're gonna see whether or not we can run our side mirrors. So we've got our four rubber mounting clamps. There's 10 mil nuts on one side and then a Phillips on the other. There's also some grommets in here. So we're gonna mount those into the windshield first. So we're gonna undo all four of these we're gonna remove the rubber grommet, and in that grommet there is a metal sleeve. We gotta push it out. So pull the metal sleeve out from the grommet, and then you'll be able to press the grommet into the windshield mounting locations on the windshield frame. So take your grommet and just pop it in there. And then push your sleeve back inside. Best part, let's test fit this guy for that. We're gonna slide this windshield in place now. It looks like the mirrors don't, don't interfere with the seal at all, so we can keep those on like they are, which is good. It's snugged up against there really nice. It's in the grooves on both sides really nice. Actually, it's gotta go over this way a touch. There we go. I'm just making sure it's even on both sides, and it is. And it's sealed up on top. Seems to be sealed up, seems to be sealed up on the inside as well. Uh, one or two tiny little gaps there, but I mean, hey, that's understandable. I really don't care if it leaks a bit around it. Um, 
it looks pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, the seal around the bottom looks really good, actually. On a lot of um, windshields, you'll find sometimes the bottom seal doesn't really seal very well. This one seems to fit on there pretty nice. Um, so that's good. Something to note, if you've rolled your machine over, then it's highly likely even if it was a minor roll, the cage has sh shifted or tweaked just a little bit. If you know you've done that, like I have, I've had my machine over on this side more than once and on the other side. So don't get upset that the, that the windshield doesn't fit perfectly. If you had a brand new Virgin machine, then I'm guessing it would. Um, I can tell you right now, my cage isn't perfectly even on each side because it is tweaked. So I'm not gonna go complain that the windshield doesn't fit, right? I've actually tweaked my cage. And with that being said, the windshield actually fits a lot better than I thought it would. I was a little worried that it might not line up well, but I guess my cage in this section isn't really that tweaked. It's more or less bent in there a bit. Down the line, I'm gonna go to an aftermarket cage, but this setup is made to work with an OEM cage. But with that in mind, I know a lot of people when they build an aftermarket cage, they'll either get a windshield fabricated from the get-go, or they'll try to keep the specifications of the cage on the front similar to stock so that you can use um, stock fit glass uh, like this windshield or or like a polycarbonate or a quarter windshield or something like that so let's get the um the mounts on there and then fine tune it i think it looks cool it really gives the razor um more of that car look uh, i think it's really neat it, it's really it's insane how much it's switched up the 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 look of the machine already i can't wait to get the the side panels on there and uh, the rear window, it's gonna start looking like a, like a hopped up Jeep. All right, so this last part of the installation, just as easy as the rest, we'll re get our clamp mounts on there and um, we'll put the flat section in under here. Grab your bolt with the washer, stick it through, and then get your nut on finger tight. And then we'll put the other four corners on as well. So now we're going to tighten up the hardware, make sure it lines up as good as it can, and that'll be it. The windshield will be pretty much installed. So it's a 10 mil on the inside, and then a Phillips out here. All right, so now we're going to install the rear window. And uh, this is pretty easy. If you have harnesses in your machine, then you're gonna have to unbolt your harnesses from the roll bar. And then I've also got a spare axle holder bolted to my roll bar there, so I'm gonna have to relocate that. So you're gonna bolt your harnesses from the tabs here, all four of them, and just let them dangle. And then I've got the spare axle holder from Super ATV here as well. I'm gonna unbolt that from my cage. So Super ATV tells you here, Test fit this to your cage before you pull the film off. Once the film's off, the glass is not returnable. I got the Razorback off-road rear cargo rack there, so I can't go in from the other side, so hopefully we can get it in here. Oh yeah. That fits like a glove. Nice. So, um, what we'll do is we'll install the seals now. There's seals that go around to seal it off. And um, we'll install the, um, the grommets here for the harnesses. And then we'll peel the protective coating and we will get this windshield mounted. So I'm gonna get this protective coating off. One thing to say, if you buy a windshield and then you don't plan on using it for a long time, leaving this coating on sucks because it kind of like, it has a lifespan of when it'll come off nicely. So I know I had a windshield in the past I didn't use for like over a year and I had it sitting in the shop when I went to peel this coating off, it was a pain in the butt. This one comes off nicely though. Do both sides. Ooh, that's nice. What do you know, you can see through it now. Super ATV sells these in a clear, a light tint, and a dark tint. I wanted the clear because I want to see what's going on around me, 
Plus I feel you won't see scratches as badly on it. We've got all the mounting hardware and the seals in this sweet huge Ziploc bag. It's got what I would call the standard um, mounts for uh, a windshield. They're the Velcro type that I took off my quarter windshield when I was taking it off prior to the full windshield install. So we'll go around and we'll mount all these seals and then we'll get the kit installed. So these gaskets press on here for the harnesses. All the gaskets they send you are a little longer than they need to be and then you just got to trim them to size. Nice, perfect fit. Like on the front windshield, they sent you two types of bulb seal. One is straight and one has a, a 90 degree on it. In this application, the straight one goes on the bottom and then the 90 degree one goes on top. So we'll take our straight bulb seal and we'll start mounting it across the bottom here. All right, that seal's on there. Now we'll just trim it. There we go. Now we gotta do the top seal. 90 degree bulb seal goes around the rest of the windshield all the way around. You have to get the bulby part, like the, the seal part towards the cage. All right, so the seal's on now. I ended up using a rubber mallet because this one was a pain in the butt to get pressed on there. It conforms pretty well to most of the, most of the areas. The tighter bends, there's a little bit of a gap, but once it goes on, I'm sure it'll press up against it. So now I'm just gonna trim off the excess. They also send you some adhesive seal, and they say you can put this in between where the glass or the polycarbonate um, contacts the roll cage and it'll reduce vibrations. If you choose to do so, it's optional. So I'll see how it mounts up and then I'll decide whether I'm gonna put it on. So now we can go ahead and we can put our clamp mounts on. They say to press them in. So we'll click this guy in there. And we'll do that for the other five spots as well. This one won't fit, the hole's too small. Both the middle ones don't want to fit, so I'm just going to grab a file. I'm just going to hit this guy with a file here. Just take a little bit off. See if I can get that to slide in there. I found I had to remove just a little bit of material in all four corners, and then everything fit perfectly. This was the only minor hiccup I ran into. Go. Now we'll do the other side. All right, so we got the seals installed, everything in there, the clamps, and we're gonna get this baby mounted. I'm gonna slide it in there. Get it into place and clamp it down. Secure the Velcros one by one. And then once we've got it in place, we'll position it better once a few of the Velcro straps are started and we can tighten it down. These are a pain to get in sometimes. The rear window is on and you know what? It seals up wicked. If you take a look at the seals on the roll cage here, it seals up good. My cage is a little tweaked and I can feel it up top here. I might have to drill a hole and put a zip tie in there, but really I can just leave it. It doesn't completely contact on top, but that's probably because my cage is squished in a bit. Um, aside from that, it seals up so good around all of these edges here. The fact that there's a minor gap on top here doesn't really matter because my roof is protecting that whole area. But this whole ceiling section here from the back and on the bottom on the firewall is super tight. It's really conforming well and I'm really stoked with it. The hardest part of the install is fishing the Velcro through the, the, um, the clamp mounts. Now, if you've installed one of these before or like a front windshield with these Velcro mounts, then you know sometimes it can be a, a pain in the butt to get those through. But overall, I'm really happy. The fit of this um, windshield is better than I expected. I expected the front to fit nice and tight the way it does, but the rear seals up a lot better than I thought it would. I didn't realize it was gonna have a seal all the way around, so I'm pretty stoked about that. 
it's starting to look like more of a, a car slash Jeep buggy or something. Um, it's kind of cool. I, it's growing on me. I think it's going to be really neat to go out when it's really cold out and, uh, and have all this extra protection. Uh, it looks cool with the rear rack and everything. The, uh, the window is really nice and clear. It doesn't provide any distortion or anything like that. So I'm super stoked with that. So um, all we have left to install now, essentially, is we're going to do the door bags and we're going to do the roof storage bag to finish off the interior of the cabin with the new windshield. And then the last part of the install is going to be installing the, um, the soft doors, uh, the upper soft doors with the windows and getting all that on. But now that I look at it, I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt for not installing those first because you got to remove the front windshield and you got to remove the rear windshield, I think, to get them on or not remove, but loosen all the clamps. Um, and realistically, it's not full enclosure weather yet here. It's still, it's really nice out right now. It's really warm. We're having like cooler nights and, and temperature swings. So I'm glad to have the windshields on, but I'm going to hold off till it really gets frigid before I put the rest of the enclosure on. We got, we got two big trips still planned um, out to Ray's place in Minden. And um, I really feel like I don't need those windows for that. So anyways, um, stage one, of project battle wagon winter mode is complete uh, we'll button it all up near the end by putting the um, the soft doors on the top here and um, and then we'll take it from there so we'll catch up with you in a future video we'll be able to give you a review of how I like the um, the front and rear windshield and then we'll also be able to um, slap on that soft top and show you how that looks and then hopefully take it for a ride and try it out Thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the install and the winterization of the Battle Wagon version one. Uh, like I said, we'll still do a few more mods once it gets really cold to get it more equipped for the winter riding. But for now, we're done. Let's call this fall mode. Anyways, big shout out to Super ATV. They've been a channel sponsor for almost five years now. Uh, they joined in, they were the second real kind of partnership that we got and they've been with us since the beginning. Uh, big shout out to them. Super ATV has always supported grassroots motorsports or power sports in this point in the sense of they're always supporting the small guys and the big guys and, and they're bringing value to the community. Uh, their parts are a good deal. They have great customer service. I don't need to tell you guys that though. I'm pretty sure most of you know there's not many people out there that haven't owned a Super ATV part or don't currently have one on their machine right now. So big shout out to them. Um, looking forward to getting the rest of the goodies on here. More, mostly I'm looking forward to trying out all these new parts. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Ride safe out there guys. And as always, follow us on Instagram and on Facebook to see pictures of all the behind the scenes as well as rides. And also, don't forget to subscribe to that channel. And head on over to Super ATV's website if you want more detailed um, product information. And if you want install videos for basically all their products, they offer those on their YouTube channel. Uh, including one for the front windshield and the rear windshield as well, I believe. So head on over there and show them some support.